All right, today is Friday. The big game is on tonight. Hope everybody knows about that, and we don't need to talk about that. One of the things that everybody seems to be talking about is comparing Jab's family to Zach Campbell, and there's no competition there. There's just no comparison. Two different entities. You know, um, Jab's is a breaker, and Zach Campbell is not. The temptation to steal from your customers and take from your own product is too great. That's why I don't want to become a breaker. Not all breakers are like this, but it's just one of those things. You know, if you just don't do it just right, then everybody's going to criticize you, complain, and have all these kind of conspiracy theories about you. Zach Campbell does something completely different and tries to do it, present it in a professional and polished manner with a professional cameraman, and he doesn't just go to Pirates uh, Park and and snag a few foul balls and sell them to customers on or fans of his through his Patreon or eBay or what have you. At just you know when you add all these tack on fees and adders, you're just like the cable companies, or you're just like the um, uh, the new providers that provide everything through the web, you know, or, or the you know streaming online stuff. You know, another channel comes through and blah 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 blah. What's interesting is there was a channel called Sports Grid on my uh, free cable or free not free cable free uh, antenna TV, and Sports Grid has disappeared because who wants to see a bunch of middle aged guys complain about sports? I mean, if we don't like uh, Joe Buck, you know, who are these guys? You know, these guys are several levels below Joe Buck and all the other kind of uh, Mike Tarikos of this world. And who are they? We can get that stuff on, on YouTube all day long and who cares about that. So let's get into some cards that I'm talking about here. There is a problem with the mailbox. I put stuff in almost every day or every other day and the box is almost empty every single time. It was an absolutely completely 100% empty box today. Um, one of the things is that the stuff that I am ordering um, is coming through COMC. COMC takes a little bit of a while, but I'm holding at COMC until Black Friday comes along, and then anything that may not have been a sale all year might be just enough, you know, a few cents cheaper, and that might be my chance to grab those cards. And so. We're going to get into that stuff. And then, of course, I would happen to find a card that I kind of want. Unfortunately, the exchange rate changed within a day that I choose to purchase the card, so it's another $1 or $2. Um, but the price uh, for this card um, was about half of what I see a damaged condition card for. And it's coming from freaking Italy. So, you know, it's not anybody any of you guys have probably heard of, but somebody promoted him as one of the better players. Um, at some point and I said you know I kind of like that card and it's from a time period when I would have been about five or seven years old five to seven years old somewhere in that particular range uh, probably closer to five four or five I'm guessing and I just thought it was a nice basic card these things typically are faked but I don't think this player is faked and it had kind of some rough corners so I'm pretty sure it's legit and I looked at all the other cards that the guy was selling and it's all over the I would say all over the place but it's very consistent so I figured that was and also the card is from Italy so that kind of made are printed in Italy so that makes a little more sense now let's show you this card right here and this is a leaf pop century you're gonna get glare city today because there's nothing I can do about these shiny foily cards here. At one time, I purchased this card for, I'm not even joking, four dollars. Maybe it was a little over four dollars, but it was not even five dollars. And each one of these, I got four or five of these examples uh, for four dollars a piece. And I can't remember the shipping, but it was ridiculous. The guy had a whole bunch of these. I should have bought every card he had because people were asking anywhere between thirty and a hundred and some dollars for each card. And whether they're getting them, I do not know. These are leaf pre-production proofs from 2018. And this is Don Most or Donnie Most from Happy Days. It's not autographed, although I guess you could pop it out of the holder um, and meet him at a convention and have him autograph it. And then put it back in the holder somehow. Um, but I was going to go for the rainbow of these. And of course, there are still unsealed boxes. We hope that they've never been resealed. This is through Wowzer. has been on eBay for a long time. I bought from them many years ago. And a box, you get three of these cards, a whopping three. So imagine if you get this Don Most and somebody charged only four dollars for this card times three, um, and then that's three hundred dollars for a box. Fifty of them have sold, and that is all you get. That is crazy for a box of those. But then you go look at this. Here's a Don Most, the pink one. I have a pink variety, but it could be a pink, you know, opaque variety. I just don't know how many one of ones there are. There's, I'm sure, at one time a list. I can look and see which ones there are. This is a one of one, and it's $30. I paid less than $30, I want to say, for all the ones that 
I had grabbed. So do I really want to do this? You know, I would like to buy that bit buy be in this for fifteen dollars. But is the seller going to come off fifty percent? That's kind of like a rude offer, saying, "Hey, fifteen dollars, please, and can I get free shipping?" You know, so it's still almost twenty dollars, and that's basically only ten dollars off the overall price, or approximately ten dollars. So there is that one, and I got to double check that Panini didn't do a lot of the same cards over and over again and call them one hundred ones because a lot of cards are making mistakes. The only thing that tells us is a one of one is the actual label inside the holder here. Nothing about this card says one of one. It's not even stamped on there. And maybe they couldn't stamp on there, but whatever. It's in a plastic bag and it'll be in my collection. And maybe this Don Most might be, you know, bought by somebody and then sold for five dollars down the road. I have no idea. Wade Boggs fan is always going on about cards that have just jumped up in price and are never gonna come down. This is a perfect example. Don Most is one of those kind of secondary actors that you'll just grab because you like Happy Days, but you just don't are not a Don Most super collector for thirty dollars. I'm only a Don Most super collector because I ended up with about four or five of that rainbow there. And that's what they call the rainbow here. You know, all the different colors of the rainbow, different varieties. There's clear and opaque varieties, and of course they're blank back because they never put the back on it. That's just the front of the card before they finished it. So they call it a pre-production proof. This is a neat card I found in my collection the other day. Nate will enjoy this. This is the New York Giants, not to be confused with the ever-popular San Francisco Giants, but this is a West Westrum. Uh, sometimes I always say West Westrum, but West Westrum, and this is a 2000, some sort of um, World Series, uh, I can't remember, I don't know, it's through the years or something, it's really hard to read on that foil, the foil is just crazy on this one, but this is numbered uh, 895 out of 1954, I got to see either on ComC or Burbank Sports Cards for a dollar, and I was like, what the heck, one dollar for this card, oh yeah, take that all day long, it's 895 out of 1954, and there's other cards from this set, you know, like 1986, what other World Series or, or special games there were. Um, there's not a lot of New York Giants cards out there, especially Wes Westrom. And there's some other players. And like I said, these are very, very affordable these days. Um, Willie Mays, I think there was a Willie Mays in this variety, like for four bucks. Also probably numbered in 1954. But again, when you multiply that 1954 uh, times how many ever copies and how much in the set, then it just turns out to be super massive. But think about this one. This card is from like 2002 and that has an awesome uh, underpriced value for somebody that you don't get to see very often. If it was Hank, Hank Greenberg, I'm sure somebody would probably put 25 bucks on it and probably get that because Hank Greenberg has different characteristics that make him collectible. I just don't know there's a huge market for West Westrum, but for a dollar for a really cool card that not very many people know about or have, I think that's a pretty good deal. And then I was going to show you this here. These are selling for about thirty to forty dollars these days, sometimes twenty bucks. And this is number nine of ten, Aaron Judge. I got this for ten dollars because the seller was willing to make a deal. Aaron Judge was a solid player, but he wasn't doing anything special back then. And this card isn't that special because there's different numbers to ten varieties of of similar five by seven cards, and that's why that makes this so not valuable. If there was only a couple five by sevens of Aaron Judge, everybody would be fighting for those but they're buying it now all day long for 20 to 40 50 or even a hundred dollars but they're just not super valuable and one of the things that I don't like about these cars is they take all the foil off of it except for the number and remove all the bells and whistles so it's like hey let's have a boring card that you can get online from top and here's another one here that's missing all the cool stuff on it I think there are some other designs and decorations that's missing off this uh, Gareth Barry mid midfielder number to 199 I paid something like three and a half dollars for this one I think for free shipping. Um, I forget. Card finders, I think, is what it was. They have most of the 5x7s. I believe these were available in set form. You buy the whole set and everybody just broke up the set. They made their money on the big, hot ticket cards, the rookie cards, and that sort of thing. They're all gone, and then just this one shows up. But if you just want a nice example of something you can put on a shelf and display, this is a very, very affordable example, um, especially in this way, too. And you've got, of course, an Aaron Judge that a super collector might need, you know, 10 years down the road. I can't find these anymore. I need an at number to 10, and there's nobody else on the web that has one. Some guy wants 125 bucks for it. 
So that's really all I have for you. Again, nothing to show, but some, some cool stuff that I've had in my collection for a while. I mean, you can get lots of numbered stuff like like this golf card. This is off of Com C. I bought a while back ago. It's numbered to something ridiculous like two ninety nine. I want to say it was like something like forty five cents for that card. Uh, the only person reason I got it because I know who Angela Stafford Stanford is. Stanford liked a college. There was a I think she lost the tournament, but many years ago it's in my binder. I saved the article. It may have been a a, a local. Um, tournament here too but um, it was televised nationally through I think NBC or CBS and I watch it on TV and and there was some sort of three-way tie or something like that a playoff and it was just one of the most fantastic rounds of golf that I've ever watched um, and, and and she finally got a rookie card a few years ago even though she's probably close to 40 years old so that is all I have for you hope you enjoyed that let me know what you're collecting and if you collect any of these pre-production proofs or anything that I've showed you or if you know about these these uh, weird uh, tops foil cards from 2002 and thank you for watching